A lot of new faces played last weekend for the Buckeyes. We got to find a way to talk about it. It's just too good. It's just too good. Welcome to the podcast daily for Wednesday. That's Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward. And it's a different, it's still a stock watch. It's still stocks. Are we doing only futures? Futures. It's futures just, just some guys that you saw play on Saturday that you were like, huh, I'm a little more intrigued than maybe I was before Saturday. Don't say Matthew Jones. Don't say Matthew Jones. Don't say Matthew Jones. Bill Landis. <laughs> Uh, he's not a young guy. He's not a young You're talking guy. about a new center, he's, perhaps? He's oh. the opposite. He's Interesting. The opposite of young Interesting. Guy. All right. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take the layup, I guess, and, and say Calvin Simpson hunt for that play that Ryan Day singled out after the game. And Jim Knowles talked a little bit about on Tuesday. My man had the whole offensive line running, running at him. <laughs> and he just like took on the first block, kind of sidestepped it, and made the tackle after a short gain on a screen. And I, that's a player that I loved when Ohio State got him, like under the radar. Texas Tech thought they had a, the steal of all steals, and Ohio State's like, no yeah. thanks. We'll, we'll take that <laughs> we'll guy. Take that from How you. was a top five cornerback under the radar? Well, he wasn't at the time they but... got him. Um, yeah. They did the early work, and, and Ohio State cleaned up because they're Ohio State. That's what they do. Um, I think he's got an incredibly bright future here. And Jim Knowles said, like, he's fast, he's fast, he's fast, like four, four or five times in a row, and, and he is. He can, he can really fly. But there's more to him than that. And I was impressed with the physicality on that play because I guess maybe – not that I was uncertain of it, I just like didn't know whether or not that was a part of his game because all you really heard about was the speed that he had in, in, in high school. So I think it's important in this defense to be a corner who likes to mix it up, right? We've, we've seen certainly Davis and Nelson do that, and even Denzel Burke take his game to another level in that regard this year. And Dre Matthews, when he's been out there, has done it. And, and it's important for Calvin Simpson Hunt to show a willingness and ability to do the same thing because he could very well be uh, not, maybe not starting next year, but in the rotation at cornerback next year um, and he'll need to do that. So I thought that was good. It felt like both of you were, and this is not a, not meant as a comparison or knock on either one. It felt like on signing day, both of you guys were like more enamored by the tape with Calvin Simpson Hunt than Jermaine Matthews. And the only reason I bring that up is because now Jermaine Matthews has also proven it and put it on tape a lot and they have both of those guys moving forward. The, the current Ohio State secondary is in a great spot and the future seems like it is built to last for the next couple of years yeah. as well. Jermaine got here in January and, and uh, Calvin got here in June, and that's why you see him now getting his chance late in the season. But the talent is there. I mean, they were two of the top five corners in the nation uh, pretty much across the board last year, so you expect that. Uh, one guy who also like finished in the top eight or so of his position ranking a year ago when he committed to Ohio State and had everyone in the country saying, well, he's never going to play there, is uh, Lincoln Keenholz, uh, who, guess what? He's good. I'm telling you what, I, there's not a lot you can take from Saturday um, for in that situation. But what you can take out of it is that kid did not seem phased at all heading into the game at Ohio State for the first time. Mm -hmm. A middle of a drive, like it's just, hey, go ahead. And he was <laughs> out there and he's just comfortable. He, uh, talking to people, like there was some conversations that he was like nervous, like f first play. And he's like, oh, this is just football. And that kid's an athlete. And I don't know when his moment is going to be here at Ohio State. But he's good enough to play at Ohio State, and he has had people raving for months. Uh, I don't think in an ideal world he would have played on Saturday. If you would have had Devin Brown, you would have had Tristan Jebbia, maybe he wouldn't have even need to go in the game. Mm -hmm. But it's really important long-term that he did, I think, to, to just get out there and see what it felt like. Uh, and for the fans to see him move and handle the offense, like the kid really does have a little bit of juice to him. And I, I know that he was mad that he missed the third I was down. Gonna, yeah, what, hap what happened on that play? He had – man coverage uh, on Jaden Ballard and wanted to take a shot to the end zone, but he had Colonel Tate not covered for okay. a first down. And the, Ryan Day... The, the starting quarterback and the head coach both yeah. were like, uh, we're not going to let that happen. So, you know, <laughs> I actually had a conversation with Lincoln about this on Monday, just a quick text conversation, like, are you mad about it? And he said, I'm not mad, but I know I should have taken the other route. Uh, he's like, but there was man coverage, no safety help, I have to take that shot. I'm like, yeah, but not on third down. <laughs> so it, it, it's one of those things where you see a kid who, who understands the moment, and I think people are going to be really excited as they get to see him play more. I don't know when that's going to be at Ohio State. That's yeah. the whole thing. Like The way this season has gone has changed the quarterback uh, trajectory a little bit here for the next year probably um, because now you're looking at maybe a three-man competition next spring depending – no matter what happens over the next month and a half, you're going to have three guys fighting for that starting job um, where going into the season, I think we all believe it would be a two-person battle that has a nice, easy yeah. rhythm to it. Now maybe that's not the case, but 
Lincoln Keenholz can play, and people should not uh, just dismiss him because he was from South Dakota. South Dakota Joe Burrow uh, is gonna be is gonna be a real deal. So I think Joe Burrow might be South Dakota Joe Burrow. <laughs> um, there was a play, and I'm, I'm maybe I'm just making too much of it. And it's like a very little thing, but the first completion he had was like a play action boot. And when he, when the fake happened, there was like a collective like ooh in the crowd yeah. because like he sold it so well. But was the ooh because they were shocked they were letting him pass the ball, <laughs> or because he was so good at selling the play action? I think it's because he looks very natural running it, and I thought people probably assumed he was just going to bootleg it, okay, and take it, and then all of a sudden Jelani was wide open right in front of him. I thought he was going to run it, and if you just yeah. use Jelani as your lead blocker there, you might go yeah. forty five. That was the one thing I'm bummed we didn't see is that he didn't run more. Yeah, or again, it, it's the ultimate small in-game sample size, but it does go back to a lot of what we saw during the open periods of practice in August that, you know, I, I've said this many times. I think that Kyle and Devin are more similar athletically than they are dissimilar, but Lincoln Keenholz is different from them. And I think you could see that in the movement on that boot. Uh, again, that's, that's having seen him do other things in practice with his legs to move around, uh, you know, and it's still early. I, I think the impressive part is still that you've had three three-ish weeks, four weeks now, where he's not just working with the scout team and actually learning the offense. The fact that even if it is late in the game that Ohio State's like, well, you know what, kid? Go out there and throw. You're going to get a play-action th- pass. You're going to have an opportunity to throw on third down. Didn't get that perfectly. But those those are the things that in the years past we've talked about. Well, CJ went out there as a backup. They never even let him throw it. Like Kyle McCord's going in games and he's handing it off. Like, don't they get frustrated? Well, they, they didn't do that with Lincoln Keenholz on Saturday. He got to run – a chunk of the offense. That's why I asked Ryan Day on Tuesday, like, would you do it differently next time? And I, I think, like, if the game unfolds on Saturday against Minnesota, similarly to how it did against Michigan State, I think you will see Lincoln early in the second half, not coming in six minutes to go in the third quarter. I think, like, they, they just wanted to see if he could be comfortable out there and not look like a chicken with his head cut off. And I thought it was super weird on Saturday. Like, oh, take out all the athletes. <laughs> Leave in the court in the uh, offensive line and then just stall the offense. If you're going to do that, you may as well take everyone out. Now that I think they feel confident enough that they could. I thought that uh, Saturday was a step in the right direction for C.J. Hicks. And, you know, I know that many people on my left and right and watching have wanted to see him play more and build for the future. You know, some of that comes down to, you know, the guys ahead of him for one. And then being able to take that next step in practice for two. And then when there have been opportunities late in games that you don't look out of place. And I, I think, was it at Purdue? I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, that that was not a, like a, a reassuring sample size for him. Again, it's super small and it doesn't mean anything for the future. But if the coaches are evaluating that, it's like, can this be expanded beyond Tommy, Cody, and Steele? They want to see more in those moments, and I'm not sure that CJ delivered on that, but on Saturday he did. So that's one month later. It's another month of growth. It's maybe a different amount of practice reps in the week because of the injury to Tommy, uh, you know, and as them making contingency plans. I thought that CJ made the most of it. Was it 100% perfect? No, but he made one play that really flashed, and Jim Rolls also talked about that on Tuesday is like, you know, understanding it and, and finding the gap and hitting it and making a play at the line of scrimmage. So that that's important. Is it important for... I don't know, Saturday or a week from Saturday? Maybe it's not, but if we're talking about down the road, I think those are the opportunities that you both have been wanting to see. Yeah. And I sort of understood why they hadn't been, but Saturday was a prime opportunity for and he capitalized. It's a point worth reiterating that like when, when these games happen and young guys get to play, we take notice most of the splash plays because I don't we're not we're like halfway engaged. Like when Jermaine Matthews is a pick six or Brandon Innes scores a long touchdown, I'm like, oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> I don't think we watch every play, but Ryan Day said after the game, like, all these snaps are gradable. And the, the bad ones that we don't tend to notice, yeah. the coaches staff does notice. Yeah. And that is why that's how playing time gets affected. So I thought, I agree with you. I thought that CJ did not look particularly great when he had that somewhat extended opportunity a couple weeks ago and he looked much better against Michigan State. And that's what you want to see. This is so, I mean, we're in such a, a weird um, point of the season for Ohio State because if the Buckeyes – Lose in Ann Arbor, Tommy Eichenberg. All these guys are not playing again after that, right? So the, I'm going to put that out there. I'm right? just saying the bowl game will come, and and these reps for CJ Hicks and these. Yeah, guys, well, we thought that was the case last year too, and then CJ's like, oh no, I'm back in. It's going to the Peach Bowl. 
Uh, don't don't make claims like that, Burn. This is, is college football. It's unlikely, okay? It's unlikely. So these reps are important for these guys. You don't want C.J. Hicks to go out there potentially in the first time of his career to really play extended minutes in a bowl game and, and not look like he has any idea what he's doing. We saw that in, in the Utah game a couple of years ago where the defense was like, what the hell? <laughs> and then they you know, took him a half and they, they got things figured out, thankfully, because Tommy Eichenberg had played all season poorly. And then the defense was like, oh, lights on. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just you should be able to play a little defense in the Rose Bowl. A little defense in the Rose Bowl. So I, I think these, I just don't think that these are throwaway reps ever. That's, I guess, my point. Like you could yeah. be, you're huh? very close to being full-time guys. I agree. Another guy? We What's don't there? have to. I mean, you can talk about anything. We got to talk about Jelani Thurman. Yeah. Jelani. Well, I, I, just, I thought that's, we were all going to take a turn on yeah. Jelani. Welcome yeah. to the Jelani Thurman show. Uh, that dude's a house. <laughs> um, I don't know. Ryan Day said on Tuesday, like, someday soon he'll be playing a lot. I don't, that's probably not a this year proposition, right? Although they're like kind of thin at tight end. So maybe, maybe you'll see an extended, uh, playing time for him if the game gets out of hand this, this coming week against Minnesota. You know, the other reason I think they let Lincoln throw, as to, to your point, is because Jelani Thurman, if they're talking about the next step in his development, like physicality, blocking, that seems like something he's going to be able to mm -hmm. do. The ball skills part, I think, is what they're trying to unleash. And like, so it's not so much, we got to see Lincoln throw, but maybe it's, we got to see Jelani catch a ball against a, a live defense out there. Pocket that for bull peas later this week. <laughs> he did so, catch two and he, Finished both runs pretty physically. He did do the first down sign where he was nowhere near getting the first down. Maybe he was just saying what direction they were going. Or like, hey, this is my first career catch. So that was funny. But I, yeah, if you wanted to see like a uh, big old dude moving smoothly, catching the ball and, and looking like he's going to be a weapon in the future, you definitely saw that. Field awareness is learned. That is true. It comes, okay, comes like, with reps. Yeah. Would you want to tackle him? Hell no. Neither did Michigan State. That was hilarious. <laughs> they were trying so hard, and he was like six guys. And Can you just go out of bounds? He just like gave up. They're like, ah, screw it. Next play. Next play. Uh, da, 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 da. Malik Hartford is really important to the rest of the season, and I, I think we've talked about it enough over the last couple of days that I don't need to really belabor the point. But that's a guy who all of a sudden is a integral part of where the Buckeyes' defense is going uh, because of Latham Ransom's injury and. Saturday was a major step up for him. I think that we talked again uh, on rewatch shows and everything else about how he maybe had a, a blip or two in the first quarter where you're like, oh, don't pull him, don't pull him, don't pull him. And then they didn't pull him and they let him play through it. And I think that's going to be huge for, for him in the secondary. And again, at two, you brought up Kelvin Simpson Hunt earlier, but like the future of this secondary is really, really bright. And it, it's, it's going to be brighter, faster than I think people expected yep. based on the, the way that Jermaine Matthews has played, the way Malik Hartford is playing, what we saw in temp, in the little glimpse from um, Kelvin Simpson Hunt to Kai Stokes getting more reps, like there's some dudes back there. If he wrote, dudes. if he wrote canoe still counts, then I'll just throw him out. Of course, he does. Like, he's our guy. Uh, Snap Judgment's legend. Uh, he's a legend of Snappy Jays, and I, I really, it's coming along nicely for him, the progression, and that could be pretty important, uh, depending on the severity there for Mike Hall. Uh, Ty Hamilton is playing at a probably higher level than he gets credit for. We know what Tyreek Williams is doing, but you can't uh, probably just get through a trip to Ann Arbor with with two dudes uh, up there in the middle. So Hero Canoe, given what Michigan we know wants to do on the ground and against Corum and Edwards and, and that offensive line, which I don't know if it's as it's, it's definitely it's not. not as dominant as it was a year ago or two years ago. No, and there are uh, certainly at right tackle for them. We'll get into that next week, but like. There may be opportunities for Ohio State to make plays with its defensive linemen, but if they're if they're banged up a little bit in the middle, and in my call we always say it like highest ceiling perhaps of those guys and NFL scouts drooling. Somebody else will have to help shoulder some of that load, and that that seems like Hero Canoe is making himself a, a push for that. Yeah, he is. Um, it seems like his his snap count has gotten I think higher and higher the last few weeks making that play against wisconsin helps made another play this this past week so they're going to need them because I, th I think i agree we don't want to get too much into michigan preview at this point but i think there's going to be some stuff schematically with like perhaps more defensive linemen or like bigger personnel packages that they're going to want to get into in that game and here will be a big, uh, big part of that it yeah. could be yeah. we we can't help ourselves as we just like we did on snap judgments on tuesday we had to get a little bit into the game it's too close too excited for it already but ohio state uh plays You're excited I'm excited. Yeah. I'm pumped. It's one of the biggest games that I am also excited. 
this guy's going to be a, a bag of frayed nerves next super, by this time next super week. Excited. As he's, he, he already is. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I guess he's already there. But we'll see. There should be more opportunities for uh, those young Buckeyes to play. Ohio State a massive favorite yet again against Minnesota Saturday, 4 o'clock. A lot more coverage coming your way on the podcast as we get another day closer to that one. Thanks for joining us on the podcast daily for Wednesday. That is Bill Landis and Jeremy Birmingham. I'm Austin Ward, and we'll talk to you later.